Generals, gentlemen. Here we are in our second match for Jove versus Sturm Tiger Giap. This will be the reverse. So it's going to be Jove as the US, whereas Giap is the Vermont. Joining me once again is Mr. Iceman Joker. Hello again. This is the second match. We'll basically swept the factions. So let's see how both players do with the other faction. They just worst. <laughs> And it's actually the reverse positions as well. So, yeah. Jove will be on the left side, where before he was the right, as the other match. So, one thing that's also interesting is, is seeing different players in the same matchup, how they decide to prioritize their capping. Yeah. Some players just have different ways of really what they uh, prioritize um, in terms of the points. And we actually have double echelon uh, coming out of, of Jove. Yeah, interesting. We might just go for them really... Early map control, we'll see. Uh, what, what, did the first one? Oh, that was cool, you saw that? I didn't know that. You, you shooted it to the headquarters as soon as it came on the map to, um, to, uh, like, get the way fast, like, you to move faster, you saw that? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just esports um, things. Yeah, exactly. And we also have a commander choice already by Joe. He ran the same as Gear in the game before. He went for. Rifle company and calls in the first rifleman's going, look at that, it gets instantly vet too. Man, that's kind of... It's lucky. Uh, yeah, lucky. Um, I think that's why he yeah. went echelon, is because he knew he'd have that uh, call in. So yeah, probably. It does give him a pretty big boost. I'm not really a fan of double echelon, though. Like, it does give you extra capping power, but you can't really hold the points, because echelon just so. can't engage against Garens, even Pyos, really. But we'll get the garrison, though. That's actually a pretty big win there for... Jove, really, uh, Giap should have stopped getting the wire and gotten that building with his Pyos. Yeah, he could definitely stall a bit on that garrison. Um, that's a pretty good one, actually. I mean, the garrison is pretty shitty, but uh, the position is a really good one for Jove. Also, he's now able to flank with the rifles from the north. Probably gonna win him that engagement. Yeah, especially with the Vet 2 Rafa moving in as well. The third, yeah. well, the second squad of Garens are here, an MG on the way. But he will lose the fuel by the looks of it. Yep, there's two grands and the MG against those, but MG isn't even set up yet, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe he could he could charge the grands right now. Oh, they yeah. to retreat. There we go. Meanwhile, Jove is keeping the entire life. There's nothing to stop him from that. Not even a pie or something sent there. Um, Jove compl no, Gear completely committed to the right. Yeah, he's in a pretty rough spot now. Especially mm, yeah, he looks, definitely is. looks like Jove's gonna go for the M20. Because he is floating a bit of manpower when the call is available. So he's going to go for his lieutenant. Yep, so probably. Well, yeah, that's interesting. That's two rifles only and the lieutenant going going up against uh, the Ossia Grenz. Um, you don't see that too often. I wonder how that works out. Yeah, so there's a, a little bit late on the lieutenant, but he's getting it either way. Yep. The empty may even uh, get taken out here. He did get dig crude, but the Grens are moving up, so now he should be fine. Only one window on that garrison, so the rifle is not going to be very effective. One rifle versus eight. It's a numbers game. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, that's it's interesting. Like I think the MG definitely helped them over here, but um, the sniper would have helped as well. Like especially in in situations like these, the sniper is. I mean, it's not as good in, as in Co One against garrisons, but um, it's definitely not bad. Like you still have a decent chance of hitting units and garrisons with it. Yeah, I prefer the, the sniper to clear garrisons rather than the mortar. Just because the mortar is too immobile. The sniper you yeah. know, is very fast. You can rotate around pretty quickly. Uh, and it's, it's the same with uh, Flame of Pyos, but the munitions is generally a bit too valuable in the early game to, to skip the med bunker. Yep. Yeah, also mortar. Is, I think it's kind of hard to build in in a build order against the your force, at least in the early game. Yeah, because it's, exactly. It's, it's not really helping you like pushing that much like a sniper because it's just yeah you don't really want to hit maybe you won't hit anything and it um, leaves you vulnerable to either the m20 or the m15 and it is the m20 exactly. coming out pretty um, stock standard yeah yeah like this the motor's better in the late game when the, when the fronts are pretty clear and then it gets all a little bit campy and all that and it, it, that's where it shines oh, um, nice fighting position. Inter yeah interesting fighting position also upgrade with a machine gun right now like the fuel, it's a nice spot for that. The good thing about it as well, oh wow, he uh, gets one nade off, is is it will prevent the heavy cover on the side. 
because the grenades yep. will just fire over and do some pretty good damage there. I always love seeing fighting positions. You don't really see them very often, and they do die pretty easily, but it's kind of more of a stall tactic, is they're not hard to deal with, but it takes time, and then in that time, you know, you're losing your fuel. Yeah. But it's 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 also I, I like seeing I saw it a couple of times uh, if you place a fighting position behind some kind of shot blocker at a key point, you could just if your opponents go for that for that capture of something, you just fire rifle nades over the over the whatever it is, hedge oh, yeah. or wall or something. It's really cool. Oh look at the M20 driving right into the machine gun. The grins actually evacuate. Yeah, it's really the wrong way, that. and that Ned cover yeah. is gonna spill an easy kill oh, on the the MG. Go. It's dead and. and those the other grants are not trying to cut off the retreat path of that in 20. Yeah, yeah, too fast. He probably could have killed it, especially yeah. as the armor's goods hadn't actually finished yet. So, GF could have played that a lot better and actually wiped the M20 if he was on the ball. The MG is down there, and he can't actually capture that one, uh, Stun Target GF, because those grins are only three models. <laughs> so the Pyres yeah, will move in for it. Which is a really good thing. Like, you want to have your Pyres capturing the MG, because then you get that huge side range from the, from the uh, Pyres. Wait, does it actually nice work thing. that way? Does the sight range transfer over? Yes, it does. It's, Whoa. it's really it's really important because uh, I didn't know you that. Can, yeah, and the it also makes AT guns a lot lot more powerful. Whoa. Yeah. This is why I like <laughs> harsing with you. This little knowledge bomb. That's actually really awesome. I, I knew it was like yeah, that for is. armor, like for example, if shock troops capture something. Um, yeah. But that's, yeah, for an MG, I see why uh, that would be very potent. Because MGs and AT guns, they both have more range than they have sight range. So having that extra sight yeah. is going to be um, pretty, so pretty they're potent. Kind of, kind of, yeah, they kind of rely on other units to scout for them, but with that, it's at least a little bit they can scout for themselves. So does that mean oh, if wow, you... That, that rifle. Wow. I might take it down over there. Does that mean it'd be worth, like, killing your own squad with grenades just so you can get the recruit with pyres? Um... That's an interesting thought. Um, Manpower-wise, probably, but munitions would, would generally not be worth it, unless you had, like, a mortar or something. Yeah, probably, yeah. I mean, or a flame or something. Yeah, it's also what... I don't know, what I... It's always funny to think about is to... If you, to capture a, a, a team weapon, if you even if you don't need it, you can just retreat to the base and then kill it with a flame or something. Just in case you might need it, so you, your opponent's not able to pick it up. Well, the M20's moving in. But I don't yep. think you can really kill the the 222. No, probably not. But maybe yeah, maybe he's, he's trying to combo it up with the rifle grenade from this rifleman here. Yeah, it was a bit of a bad timing for that, I guess. Like he engaged with the uh, M20, then pulled it out, then pulled in the rifleman. It was uh. Hmm. Yeah, but the bazooka crew. Uh, oh yeah. But he's there getting forced away. He's in net cover, so he can't really achieve too much here. It's actually a pretty good engagement for Giap. He's he's kind of uh, just bleeding Jove a little bit there, but Jove still has. The entire map, really, apart from that fuel point, and double munitions as well, so there shouldn't be any shortage of the flamers. Yep. Don't think we have any M6 mines on the field just yet, though, from that M20. Um, no, probably not. I haven't seen anyone, uh, any, yeah, any of those. Uh, probably Gap should work on capping the right VP though, because that was like what what was a big problem for Joven in the in the last game, the VP pressure. Uh, or maybe just the rest of the flanks, but the rest of the flanks, yeah, it's, it's generally really hard when you have an M20 against you. And we do have the Major coming online, so it will be the, the fast Sherman. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's a very one-sided matchup. You don't really see much more than the, the M20 into Sherman. Yeah, there isn't really... Like, you kind of depend on that, because you won't really have a lot of... Like, you won't have the edge in the, in the late game, that's pretty much for sure, especially with the... With the uh, commanders that Giap had available, like only, only three Tiger commanders, so yeah, it's gonna yeah. be a tough late game. So here is the mechanized assault. So Giap could go for the Stug E or the Stug Every Squad Wipe, as I like to refer to it as. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funnier in text because you can say E dash; it just looks a bit better. But otherwise, we do have this MG in the house. May get taken out here, but the rifle grenade will connect. M20 could maybe follow it up. No, it's it's pretty far off. Yeah, it gets Faustus by the by the Grants. Um, it's actually pretty low health. Yeah, if the MG had a bit more health, he could have used the the AP ammo to burst the M20 down, but probably would have lost it in the garrison if he tried to stay around amongst that rifle squad. Yeah. I believe it's AP, unless it's incendiary or something. I don't know what it's called. Uh, I it's it is incendiary, yeah, incendiary. Yeah, it's incendiary, yeah, it's, it's, it's fast for rounds. I 
Like, I'm not really a wall specialist, but I kind of... No, we need Imperial Dane. Yeah, I'm not sure if Force Force would actually would be more fretful to armor, but yeah, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> I think it, like, it melts through it or something. Because it's yeah, like, super that's... hot. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, we just assume it does. <laughs> AP is just easier. Yeah. I'll call it AP if you call it AP. Yeah, I call it AP. Right, we'll do it. Or fire. <laughs> secret, <laughs> secret pinky handshake or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, other than that, Jove's going to have his Sherman very, very soon. This is actually rather similar to last game, with the exception of the lack of Sniper, which I think has worked out better for GR in the end. Yeah, he's, he's, I'd say he's in a better spot than yeah. Jove was in the last game. Uh, he's also taking out that fighting position over here, nice. with the, which opens up the right, the left side for fuel harassment. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I guess, the side effect of that, uh, of the double echelon is that he was able to pull out the vehicle crew, but still keeping an echelon on the field. Maybe he did that because he, whatever, wants to get minesweepers later or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, the vehicle crew becomes really handy against flight vehicles. I like that. Echelon's also handy if you want to build fuel caches. You just have that option available. Yeah. yeah fuel, exactly. fuel caches can be pretty important as US, just because in the late game, you know, it really is so reliant on, on the vehicles. Yeah, you can just keep on the pressure well, with, the, uh, with, with the amount of fuel it gets. You gotta replace vehicles immediately if you wanna, wanna keep it up. Yeah, especially with, with the way that like Jackson's work is, you really need to have a yeah. Sherman to soak up the damage and to also sight for the Jackson. So like, if you lose the Sherman, you can't really use the Jackson, and obviously the Sherman can't deal with tanks on its own. So like, you have to have like two of those tanks up at all times, and if you lose one of them, you're not really effective. Rifle nade, not quite and yeah. properly. Yeah, that was that was that was cool. I love to do that as well myself. Yeah. It's so funny if it works, it's so cool. It makes you feel pretty swaggy. You almost got it as well, if it was a little bit further. It's a bit harder to judge. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. There was a clip of someone doing it. I think maybe it was like helping Hans doing it on stream. Yeah, I, oh. I did it a couple of times as well. It's, it's. I, I feel like it's easier with the rifle nades than with any other grenades. Because they instant detonate, just, yeah. Yeah and, yeah, and they have the, the, the range, so you can just like aim it really good. I don't know. It's easier with those. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Our but this unit still get still get every squad wipe. But I mean, it's, it's going to be the Sherman on the field, and the Sherman uh, is going to be incredibly potent against the Stug. Uh, the Stug just won't really penetrate. I mean, it's not an anti-tank vehicle. It's it's an anti every squad. Yeah, but I think the the combination of double pack plus one or two Stugies is still pretty sick against US forces. It's yeah. just you be basically. Easy eights is what stands up against, but even Jacksons can't really like. They get one shot off at the Stug and then the Pekans will force it away or even kill it. It's pretty insane, and I don't really like it to be honest. It's kind of yeah, cheesy. I agree. The thing is with the Stug E's is they vet up very quickly, which allows them to use yeah. the target weak point. So the target weak yeah. point combined with the packs gives a you know, really strong AT on a vehicle yeah, that they also, you know, isn't supposed they also to be. Get that ridiculous firing firing rate when they when they wet up like with vet free it's completely insane. Yeah, and armored skirts. Just like, an, like an auto auto cannon, yeah, and um, against infantry and even with that firing rate it's even not yeah. that bad against vehicles because it's like penetrates at least at some point. They didn't really, you know, put the veterancy into consideration when designing the Stugi. They were just yeah, like, oh we'll just give not. it the same vet as the Stugi. It'll be <laughs> fine. Don't worry, guys. Once again, there is a vehicle crew, so it will force away the 222. Even the Stug E uh, isn't immune against the bazooka. Yeah, it's probably just gonna outrange it though, as it seems. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, never mind. Is he even working on the house with the AT guns? <laughs> I think it's gonna work out for him if he can just kill that one. Yeah. Yeah, Sherman catch the fouls and some, some, I think they take two, 80 shots so that's repair and can't really help in that engagement. I think Jove needs to get a, a Jackson as well, just so he can snipe off that Stug. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I, I honestly, I think it would made out really, like it turned out really well that he went for a Major instead of just waiting for the easy aids because... I mean, if you go Captain, you could get, get the AT gun with, to deal with the Stug E, but without that Sherman, he would be in trouble against the Stug. Oh, look, look at this uh, Sherman. Does get the wipe on the pack, 
And we yeah. do have the Phosphorus. Yeah, that was a sort of a, yeah, that's phosphorus, yeah. a cautionary measure just in case the packs went for the kill. And the Shaman really should back out, but I think he actually wants to destroy the pack if he can. Yeah, it would be, would he's, be really he's not really doing anything. I mean, the pack's rotating to get the, the wipe on it. Yeah, but it would be really good if you could capture the AD gun, actually. Yeah. That would, that would really help against the Stug and everyth basically everything else. He, he, he wouldn't really need the Jackson as much. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. he's actually yeah. smoking. That's actually pretty clever, because now he can cap with the Echelon. So that was yeah. a nice play to make. Now there comes the Stu, but it's gonna probably gonna get drive. Oh wow, look at that damage! Saying it's gonna get drive. Well, the pack flies. Trees. Yeah, just, <laughs> just get taken out by it. The Vika crew doesn't work though. If Alsa the M20, he may lose that one as well. 222, if uh, nothing else. Yeah, it looks like looks like Gibbs is really on the approach now. He's captured the, the entire left side. I mean, Jove took the right, but still, he's captured the left, and that should be really boosted his his field presence. Yeah, for sure. Vet one also already, like you said, getting that really fast. So Joe, yeah, that's a target weak point now. He can almost avoid his Jackson, only a little bit more fuel. Yeah. But uh, looking at Sinto like a GF, he isn't that far off his his Tiger. He only has 160 fuel, but now he has pretty much most of the map, and with that second fuel coming up, he's going to be able to afford it pretty soon. Yeah, and he also recapped his his, his, uh, his AT gun that he lost, so he's really in a good spot now. And uh, Jove, interesting, like he, Jove decides to go for uh, Ooh, another Sherman. For a second second Sherman instead of the Jackson. Hmm. Maybe he's putting that. Eh, it's, it's maybe he wants to really entirely rush his opponent, but that's gonna be dangerous. Two yeah, I, I guess it, it's okay against the Stuggy because Stuggy doesn't really have any armor and that much health. So the Shermans, even with AP, can actually kill it pretty well. But yeah. it does leave him in a very open spot for the Tiger. How's he going to deal with the Tiger if he only has two Shermans? He doesn't have tier exactly. 3, so there's no Captain available. He doesn't have M10s. Um, you know, maybe he should have gone... <laughs> yeah, maybe he should have waited for the EZ8, because the EZ8 is going to be better against the Tigers than a regular tier 4 Sherman. Yeah, that's what I thought. And so far, he didn't really... I mean, he got the, the Red Rifleman and some flavors rather than that. Like, the Commander didn't really... I don't know, the EZ-8 is really a core thing of that commander. Hmm. Now you see... You see, uh, Gia has a, having... Like, he captured this fuel on the right again, while Jove managed to get his fuel on the left again, so I both took the original fuel. Um, VP-wise, though, it's really... It's still looking really, really good for Jove. He has, um, like, two VPs now again, so the pressure will continue over there. Yeah, and he does have these these two packs waiting for the Shermans to rotate. Yeah. yeah he's, he's just holding out with the Stooks in the packs and waiting for the Tiger. He's going to land a Faust here on the Sherman, but I don't think he can really follow it up. He's a pretty big shot blocker, so he can repair a bit. The, uh, it was funny, the, the 222 actually like rammed his own Grins, which forced them to split yeah. up, which made them unwipable by the, the HE Sherman. So that's how you deal with Sherman, guys. You, you ram your own units with uh, 222 so they unclump. Yeah, that's also another use of the scout card, just ramming units to protect them from Ooh, the still explosives. Here. <laughs> the, uh, the captain with the bazooka's firing and the Sherman as well, but still not penetrating that much. Yeah, there's that, no target deep point triggered yet. That's, uh... That, that was the AP ammo, so he actually bounced, I think, three times in a row, even with the AP ammo, so that's just a bit lucky there. I mean, the Shermans should yeah. be a bit better than that against Stugs. They don't have very good armor, but... You will wipe the, the Grens? No? Yep, no, he gets it. Yeah, there you go. But he, he, he Grens on the pack approaching the other Sherman, and um, it's pretty low health, actually. Oh, the pack! He stopped moving the Sherman! He stopped moving nope. it! Oh, he survived, uh, although... 222 actually could kill it. It's pretty low. No, yep. it drives away. Ace? Let's get to get some back some uh, get some rear shots uh, to kill it though. It probably would be hard. Yeah, it doesn't penetrate very consistently against the front armor. No, not really. Which is good, like it shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> and Jove, it seems like Jove. That's an interesting move. He gets a medic out of his ambulance. Probably because the ambulance itself was in cooldown. Is that possible? Maybe. Oh look, this German's gone way too deep. <laughs> he's just bouncing oh, off the, yeah, off the stoog. Yeah, the Faust yeah, lands. He does have. Faust. He has the the Pigrens here, and even the packs are rotating. So, nice smoke. He's going for the repair critical. He probably can get it. Yep. 
Thanks one, one to the, yeah, there we go. Thanks to the nice smoke. Yeah. Oh, another shot. Well, that's good. Close. Pretty good RNG though on this Stug. I mean, really, the Stug probably should have tied by now. But yeah. the, the AP Shroom is just bouncing, and that's kind of what we were saying. You really want to have the, the Jackson to deal with the, the Stugs, and really any vehicles for that matter. Yeah, and he's, he's, yeah, I unlocked the CPs. Oh, he's in the CPs for the Tiger now, and he just needs a little bit of more manpower. And I really want to see how Jov's dealing with that. I also don't don't see any M10 uh, what's it? M M6. M6 mines. Yeah, so. They would help, making it immobile, obviously, but uh, there's nothing over there. Hmm. Ah, he's just... He just has to just get up something, really, like... It's hard to say, he could stop for Jackson or... Go cap, but Jackson's probably the way better choice. Although, with two AT guns and the Shreks, it's really easy to force it away. Are you gonna steal the M20? No. Oh, <laughs> almost. I just... Yeah, I just thought he did, but... He's smoking again. Look at that. Was that a tech round? Yeah, it must have been. That's why yeah, he missed. Probably. Lieutenant, yeah. it's moving up. The M20 is actually firing, revealing himself. He gets away, wow. I think it's just because Stunfog GF really prioritizing the VPs, as he should when he only has 100 left. Yeah. Yeah, but still he's doing good on map control. <laughs> like, he's double, double, double ammo, double fuel. Uh, not double fuel, but fuel at least. Um, he's gonna wow, probably gonna lose. Yeah, he's gonna lose yeah. him. I mean, HE Shermans yeah. are pretty good on retreat, but two HE Shermans are also uh, pretty good on retreat. Yeah. Doesn't drop yeah, a, a Shrek though. A Shreks are nice against Shermans because they are dropping their health really quick, but at the same time, it's really easy to wipe them. Oh, that's a dead Sherman. That's so dead. Yeah. yeah. And the Stuggy just, just the crucial hits. I'd say, like, that two Stuggy is <sighs> so powerful. Yep. So with that Sherman down, that's going to make things a lot harder for Jove. It was briefly looking good when he did take it out, and where did his fuel go? Did he go captain? Oh, he went captain. Yeah, he went captain. Man, Jove really doesn't like the Jacksons for some reason. Apparently, and there's a tiger coming on the field now. But the problem is the Stuga E and the tiger both can wipe the AT guns very easily. Yeah, really, you can really easily do this. I mean, basically, every, pretty much everything can do that right now. Like, the rifle knights will kill it as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. LMGs. <laughs> but there actually aren't any LMGs. So we had g -app not having the transfer. Oh, he's, he's gunned down the echelon. He can't re-crew the M20. You need three crew to actually uh, garrison <laughs> an M20. Yeah. So the target's going to kill it. It is actually a vet to Sherman, so... It will have yeah. uh, even more anti-infantry with the increased accuracy and rate of fire and if that was a Jackson the Vet 2 Jacksons are, are really strong against Tigers yeah that's right you can, I always forget about it you can switch to me right and then yeah. suddenly have a Vet Jackson of the best <laughs> I always do it because a, a Vet 2 Sherman isn't really that oh, much better than a Vet 0 Sherman sorry <laughs> there goes his captain he lost it already look yeah. yeah, that captain was a really bad choice. The bazookas just don't work against Tigers. And the, the Vet 2 still the armor skirts. And yeah, AT guns is just not that good, really. Sorry, I interrupted you there. What did, what did you say about the, the, the weak crews? Okay, so like the, the Vet 2 on the HD Sherman, it gives you um, mobility and like its accuracy. And it's not really that much of a big deal because Shermans are already pretty fast. They're already, you know, pretty good at wiping squads. But. The, the Vet 2 Jackson is so important because for a start, like, you pretty much always want to have the, um, the H... What are the AP shells called? The, the H... The, those things that the H. M1 are doing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, actually, he's doing some pretty good damage here against the Tiger. Yeah. Probably won't wipe it, though. Yeah, he misses. The, um, HVAP. That's what it's called. The HVAP rounds on, on the Jackson are very, very important to guarantee the penetration, to get the extra damage, um... So even if it's only a Vet 1 Sherman, like, again, the radio doesn't really do anything unless you have multiple Shermans. Even then, it's not that great. So I always transfer my my vehicle crew from my Sherman to my Jackson just because that extra um, potency of AT really helps out. Especially then the yeah. extra rate of fire at Vet 2 is, is huge. Double yeah. M1. Uh, it's, 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 it's a really smart move, but yet you're still... Wow, the damage. You're yeah, still, you may uh, kill it here. If he has vision. Yeah, you still... Still don't see a lot of players doing that. Like I, I don't see it. Even at uh, like top tier players, you don't see them doing it a lot. A lot like changing the vehicle crews, which is I don't know. It's kind of sad. 
It's really, it's a nice feature. Yeah, and it's so good to do, is like when you, if you kill a tiger or a panther, and then you just don't have any need for your Jackson, just put the crew in a Sherman, and all of a sudden, then now you have the Sherman that's more accurate, um, more potent against infantry, and then if he rebuilds the tiger, just put the crew back in the Jackson and have that, that potent Vet 2 tank destroyer. Yep. So, yeah, it's looking more and more grim for Joe for uh, Gib. As both fuels, both munitions, two VPs, uh, <laughs> really good map control to sum it up. Uh, plus, he has the Tiger on the field. Um, and he actually goes for Sniper right now, like 25 minutes of the game, you see Sniper being built. I think it's clever because it will give him uh, good ways of dealing with the AT guns. Yeah. Sherman, though, yeah, true. if it's a rough spot, he will get away from this one. He's going to be baiting into a couple of M1s. Sherman, it really shouldn't be there. Sherman, what are you doing? No, Sherman. Yeah, the gun's moving up. Uh, he's, he's baiting. He wants Ow. to bait the tiger with the M1, and that was kind of his plan, yeah. but he's going to get Ooh, baited wait. himself to the pack. Fire some yeah, smoke off. Go. Oh, he loses uh, it! Bet two. Uh. Yeah, that was huge. Whoops. That was huge. That's, that's uh, probably going to be game now, because he can't yeah. stop the, <laughs> the infantry from just walking all over his, his M1s now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he kind of he moves up with the M1s nice. to chase whatever, He's killing Skullcat at least. But still, he will get you quick to the sniper. Yeah, but a sniper. There we go. Wow, this is this is wow, this is really rough now. I... Easy eight. So he could actually kill off that tiger, but it is being repaired by two Pyos, so it's probably going to be about half HP by the time yeah, that Easy Eight he... actually gets there. He captured an Apex Forty row, which is really really good. Puts him. In a better position in case of AT, but the Grands might wipe it again. Yeah, the packs are definitely better than M1s and Zis guns with that extra rate of fire. And against M1s, they have um, more Pen penetration, but not as much yeah. vision with that Vet 1 ability you can use. Pretty neat. Yeah, it's funny, like, it's it's, it's for, <laughs> for both factions. Like, it's really good for the Auster if it captures an M1 because. You don't need the really penetration. Really <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then the other way around, if they use Force captures the pack, it really goes well. Yeah, I mean, really, you're not going to have any issues penetrating un unless you're, you're versing Soviets against a uh, IS-2 or a KV-8. That's kind of only when penetration actually matters as Axis, because there generally are any allied vehicles that have significant armor. Yep. So the Tiger's going to be checking the corner with the M1 there, ready and waiting. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Uh, wow. Oh, there goes the easy A. Uh, and that's a game. Yeah, I don't know, missing Jackson, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, we, we sort of mentioned that a bit, the lack of Jackson. Even then, though, I mean, that Sherman could have actually worked for him, um, but l losing the, the second Sherman really was what was the end. I see what he was doing. He wanted to try and bait the Tiger, but in the end, Giap made the, the alpha play with the pack gun and just took him out there. And it's not just losing the, the tank, it's also losing the veterancy, which is equally as big of a deal. If you can, you always want to try and retain the the veteran crew and put it onto your newly built tank so pretty yep. well played though i think giap um he played that mashup a lot better than what jove did yeah definitely all right well any last words um well it was a really really nice game again um it's, it's good to see how the the players from the previous match basically did it with the with the other faction now on the on the same map um yeah, well played by both of them, I'd say. Yeah, for sure. All right, well, that'll wrap us up. Catch you later. See you later. Oh, also, uh, plug your channel. Uh, oh, yeah, right. The RNG Arena. Check it out if you want to. We will have some we have some casts as well. Um, yeah, we're trying to, to, do, to upload them weekly. Um, just check out some of, some of our stuff if you like to. We know we're having a really good time, laughing a lot. <laughs> Yes, Iceman Joker does uh, come through his two casts of his own with some casters from the RNG clan as well, Mr. Festive Long Johns. So yep. I will link that in the description and probably on annotation as well. All right, farewell.